So we've done the scalar product before, this time we're going to do it in three dimensions. So we're going to run through this really fast because everything we've learned in 2D, it's going to work in 3D as well. So if I'm doing A dot B, uh, I can write that in a different way. I can write it as column vectors. So A1, this will be a number, that's the I component of A, that's the J component of A, that's the K component of A. And similarly for B here. So how do I find the dot product? Well, it's pretty simple. I multiply the I components by each other, the um, J components and the K components, and I add them together. So that is that times that, that is that times that, and that is that times that. So that means that if I had two specific vectors, something like this, A dot B, where A is uh, I minus 2J plus 3K, and B is uh, negative 2I plus 3J plus 4K. I can find the dot product by doing this times this, this times this, and this times this, and adding them together. And you can see I get a nice little dot product of 4. So the dot product, the scalar product, spits out a scalar, spits out a number. Now that's one way to find the scalar product, but the real power of the scalar product is there are two ways to calculate it. And so our second way is our geometric interpretation. And so this is our second formula. A dot B is equal to the magnitude of A times the magnitude of B cos the angle between them. So let's say I have this thing here, one vector heading off here, sort of out of the page a little bit and off in this direction, and another vector here, sort of out of the page and off in that direction. Now, I'm not going to tell you what the i, j, and k components are here. I'm just going to give you two magnitudes. So a magnitude of 7 and a magnitude of 6. But I'm also going to tell you the angle between uh, the two vectors. So just making something up here, let's say that there's an angle of 130 degrees between them. That's enough information for us to be able to find our dot product. So in this case, a dot b is going to be equal to 7 times 6 times cos 130, which gives us an answer of approximately negative 27. Negative, yeah, dot products can be negative, uh, and it's obvious that this one will be because cosine 130, that's in the second quadrant, which will be a negative. So 7 times 6 times some negative number, negative 27. All right, so we've looked at two different ways to calculate the scalar product. That's useful. We'll talk about why that's useful in a second, but I just wanted to show you just one more thing with our first version, I guess. So we can put unknowns anywhere in these equations, and in this case we have a vector, dot product, another vector, equal to 4, and we want to solve for x. I should really write solve for x. Okay, so how do we do it? Well, we're going to use that first formula, just this times this, this times this, this times this, add them together, and see what comes out of it. So... 1 times 3 plus 1 times negative x, so that's going to be negative x, and negative 1 times 2, that's going to be negative 2, um, is equal to 4. All right, so I've just been a bit lazy here. So that's 3 and minus 2, that's going to be 3 minus 2 is 1. Uh, so now I have 1 minus x is equal to 4. So uh, negative x must be equal to 4 minus 1, which is 3. So I think x is negative 3. Um, so the basic idea here is that you have some equations now, but we could have unknowns anywhere in those equations. Maybe I put two x's in there and you'll end up with some sort of quadratic that you need to solve or something like that. But there's uh, just a slightly different example to look at. Now probably the most useful thing with the uh, scalar product or the dot product is calculating the angle between two vectors. And that's a really hard thing to do when your vectors are in three dimensions uh, if you didn't know the dot product, but with the dot product, it's really, really simple. You just take the two formulas we've got, do some calculations with those two formulas, and sort of put it together. So here's the sort of question we're going to be able to solve. We've got uh, points, three of them, in three dimensions, and we're going to find the magnitude of the angle between A, B, C. All right, so let's uh, just get a vague idea of what this question looks like. So here I have the first point, uh, point one, one out of the page three across, and then one down, one, three, negative one. Our next point here is two, one, zero. So that's two out of the page and one across. Uh, so about there somewhere. So it's hard to really get a handle on this, but that point is above that point. That point is down low. This point is above it um, and over this direction and out further. And then this point is point one, uh, neg oh, sorry, one, negative two, negative three. So that means that it's 1 out, um, 2 uh, across, 1, 2, and 3 down. Alright, so again, hard to get a picture of it, but there's our idea. 
here's angle A, here's uh, B, here's C. And so then we're trying to find the angle between this upwards and across to B and uh, across and down to C. And we're trying to find that angle right there. Now to find that angle right there, it really means that we're finding the angle between two vectors. This vector here and this vector here. And that vector is vector BA. And that vector is vector BC. Alright, so I need to know what those two vectors are first of all. And so if I want to know what vector BA is, I need to take all of the coordinates from point A and subtract all of the points of point B. So that's going to be uh, 1 minus 2, which is negative I. Uh, well, 1 minus 2 is negative 1. Uh, 3 minus 1, which is positive 2. And negative 1 minus 0, which is negative 1, or negative K. And I can do the same here uh, by doing C minus B. So now I have two vectors here and here, BA and BC, and I can be really clever here because now I can do the dot product between them, and I can do the dot product between them in two different ways. I can do the dot product between them by multiplying this by this, this by this, and this by this, and adding it together, or I can do the dot product between them by finding the magnitude of this, the magnitude of this, and cosine the angle between them. All right, so that's what we're going to do. We're going to do it two different ways. Uh, negative 1 times negative 1 plus 2 times negative 3, plus negative 1 times negative 2. Okay, so that's one way to do it. Uh, the other way to do it is to do um, the magnitude uh, between them. So the magnitude here is negative 1 squared plus 2 squared plus negative 1 squared. Uh, multiply that by the magnitude of our second one here, which is uh, negative 1 squared plus negative 3 squared plus negative 2 squared, and then cosine the angle between them, and the angle between them is the one thing that I don't know. Okay, so now I can just put all of this together, and that should spit out the dot product, which ends up being 1 minus 6 plus 2, which is negative 3. So there's my dot product. All right, now I need... Um, the magnitude, the magnitude, cosine, theta. So the magnitude here, uh, 1 squared plus 2 squared plus 1 squared is root 6. Uh, multiply it by the magnitude here, which is uh, 1 plus 9 plus 4, which is 14, and cosine theta. Okay, so I'll just bring that down to the next line. And now it's just a, a matter of rearranging. So it's going to be negative 3 divided by those two things there, root 6, root 14. Uh, that's going to be equal to cosine theta. And then that means that theta is going to be equal to uh, cosine negative 1, negative 3 over root 6, root 14. And that will give us an answer shove that into your calculator, theta will be equal to 109.1 degrees. Um, now, my drawing, oh yeah, maybe, my drawing looks like it's more than that, um, but I would challenge you to, in space, in front of you, at your desk right now, pause the video and try to actually build that model in space and see if it looks right. See if I, my answer's right and the angle between the two vectors that you create is 109.1. Get some pencils, get some rulers, try to sort of build it yourself. So I'm just going to finish off with properties of the scalar product. These really could save your life in some of the more tricky problems, the geometric proof style questions as well. So here we go. It's commutative. A dot B is equal to B dot A. It doesn't matter what order you do them in. Be a little careful here. Uh, a scalar, so a number 5, times the dot product is equal to the number times one of the vectors dot product the other vector. Uh, some people think that they're looking at the distributive law and they're going to do like ka, kb, and ka dot kb, but it's not uh, the distributive law here when you're dealing with the scalar. Uh, another thing that comes from this is we can say that it's equal to a dot kb. Alright, so that scalar at the front, it's being multiplied by 1, and then you can do the dot product of them if you want. Um, if you do the dot product between a vector and the zero vector, uh, you're just going to get zero. So this is where our distributive law comes in. A dot B plus C is equal to A dot B plus A dot C. So you can see the distributive law applies when there's a plus in the brackets, not when there's a 
dot product in the brackets. Only works where there's a plus there. Same as when we're doing multiplication. And finally, a dot a is equal to the magnitude of a uh, squared. And if you think about it for a moment, the geometric interpretation will show you why that's true. Um, it would be the magnitude of a, if we did it not knowing this property, it would be equal to the magnitude of a times the magnitude of a, cosine the angle between them. The angle between them is zero. Uh, cos of zero is one. So what you get is the magnitude times the magnitude times one, which is the same as the magnitude squared. So moving on from that, if two vectors are perpendicular, then the dot product will be equal to zero. So important for geometric proofs for you to know that because often you're trying to prove that two things are perpendicular and the dot product will let you do it. You can also flip that, make it the converse. If a dot b is equal to zero, then perpendicular. Uh, that's also useful for geometric proofs. So if uh, two vectors are parallel, a dot b will be equal to, and there's two options here, um, they might be equal to the magnitude of a times the magnitude of b. And that follows on from what I was talking about here before. Um, if they're parallel, the angle between them would be zero, perhaps. Um, and then we'll get the magnitude of a times the magnitude of b cosine zero, which is one. And so we just get magnitude a, magnitude b. Or they're parallel, but they're moving in uh, opposite directions. All right, so that's 180 degrees. So if that were the case, um, you would get magnitude a, magnitude b, but uh, the cosine 180 would be equal to negative 1, so you'd get this. So same direction, different direction. All right, and I feel like we've covered a lot, a lot of ground here, but that is the scalar product in 3D. Everything you already knew just applied into that third dimension.